Recently, actress Allison Stoner put up a video on Instagram talking about her experience with Christianity. Be going to non-denominational churches multiple times a week, looking for stability and hope. And some of the pros that she's experienced with regards to having a faith and a consistency in going to church and some of the cons. Now, if you didn't know who Allison is, she is an actress who has been in movies, like Step Up 3D, Cheaper by the Dozen, Step Up. She's basically a childhood star that is releasing videos talking about trauma and talking about dealing with your issues and all sorts of stuff like that. So I wanted to jump into this video. Okay, a aesthetic of these videos are sick, by the way. She has this whole vibe with the microphone and it's all lit very well and super artistic and, you know, she got the cool haircut and all that kind of stuff. So no, no diss to her, but let's just hear her out. Okay, so I started going to non-denominational church, non church. My church experience. Here we go. Going to non-denominational churches multiple times a week, looking for stability and hope. And I put my faith in Christ as my rock, savior, shield. And I will say it did provide a container in some ways for instilling important values. That Okay, so she starts going to church, put her faith in Christ. It did create a container for instilling important values. Amen. <laughs> Okay, by the way, notice that they are already cutting away. These these are a very well done shorts. Okay, there's a main camera and then they're cutting to a second camera. Uh, this is all very well executed on her part and dare I say, intentional. Okay, so she talks about the positive. Now listen to what she goes into. Weren't modeled in the industry or in my family, but respectfully, it would be several years before I understood that the church was saturated in American nationalism, militarism, capitalism, racism, patriarchy, celebrity culture, and the like. So, I mean, she really named everything out. She named every single thing out. She forgot white supremacy. She forgot, no, she got, she got everything else but white supremacy. She definitely forgot white supremacy. She named patriarchy. She named nationalism. She named militarism. I didn't know that was an ism that we were dealing with. Militarism, apparently, is another one. She has... All the isms. Patriarchy, of course, is about the patriarchy. So all of them. She's naming all of them, right? The church is embedded in all of these different things, okay? Unfortunately, it's my observation that many well-intended believers are completely unaware of the ideologies and biases and power dynamics imbued in their pastor's interpretation or their own interpretation of Scripture. So many believers are unaware of the ideologies that are driving their pastor's interpretation of scripture. We, we, we are just blind and goofy sheep who are being led to and fro by different people. Okay, now I'm gonna give you my thoughts on this in a second, but let's just hear her out. And while praying is a powerful experience and posture of heart, it is not the same as consciously addressing your trauma and learning to regulate your nervous system. Please, Rewind and play that again. So though prayer is powerful, it is not the same as addressing trauma. Now, I, I would say they're different, right? I would, I would say they're different, but when you start minimizing prayer and elevating the therapist who's helping you with your trauma, I feel like sometimes that can have an imbalance. And by the way, I have a whole therapist course. Me and my therapist, we put together a course called mastermyhabits.com to help people find breakthrough in their habits, specifically with freedom forming habits and overcoming corn addiction, all those types of things. So I have a therapist. I have a Christian therapist. Okay. Um, but this idea that not address prayer is not the same as addressing your traumas. And by the way, we wind. Okay. So here are my thoughts. I wrote her a nice lengthy, lengthy comment that I thought would be helpful. I'm going to share that with you guys. I said, glad it provided a container for great values as most people will admit that Christianity is a container for great values, okay? I says, when we have, uh, respectfully, when we have to backdoor that most churches are saturated with every ism under the sun, perhaps it's a fundamental misunderstanding that Christianity presents a counter-cultural worldview. Christianity presents a counter-cultural worldview. And when you don't know that we are not supposed to be like the world, we have a different we have a different approach to everything. It's important to, 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 to know what you're getting yourself into. It's not that Christians are unaware of said ideologies, quote unquote, but those deeper immersed in culture are gathering their cues on moralities from peers instead of God, the Bible, or historical Christianity. With the caveat of racism, everything else described can be well explained if the topics were approached with a desire to have dialogue. Most nations are nationalistic. 
Did you know that? While people are throwing out nationalism and patriotism as a bad thing, did you know that most people, most nations, are nationalistic? It's only in America that we go, oh, America's gross. America's bad. You have no clue how good you have it. You have no clue. Go travel internationally. Go to some developing nations. Go other places. Okay? It's only in America we do this. Most nations are nationalistic. Patriarchy is what built the majority of our modern world. Hello. No disrespect to, to, to ladies. You guys have important, important work that you do. You guys have important work that you do. And you are equal in your essence and in your value. But that doesn't mean that the majority of our infrastructure, of our buildings, of our sewage systems, of everything that requires to function in America was not built by men. Look at who do the dirtiest jobs, the most physically laboring jobs, who's most at work to lose their life at a job. It's not women. And what women do is also very important, but it's not, it's not the same. So this idea that the patriarchy is bad, patriarchy is an overflow, I would say, of natural law. And assuming that it's bad, it just removes how everything functions. If men just stopped showing up to work, what would happen? If all men woke up tomorrow and just stopped showing up to work, what would happen? So I, th I think this, this conversation needs to come back to just, you know, g g g give men a little bit of the argument. G give men a little bit grace. Give men a little bit of respect. Instead of dismissing everything as a patriarchy, capitalism has pulled most people out of poverty than any other system. I promise if you explored Christianity outside the West, you'd see all these same isms are not white evangelicals, quote unquote, and our silly little interpretations of scripture. It's actually the way Christianity has always been practice. Addressing trauma is good, but prayer invites God into our trauma, and only God can move in supernatural ways. Only God can change your heart in supernatural ways. Only God can change your state, the state of your soul, and the issues that you go through in a supernatural way. Now, surprisingly, this got 50 likes, and it got a little bit of pushback. Okay, I'm going to read you guys some of the pushback. So the prejudice inherently ingrained in the religion, that's worse and so is acknowledging them and still refusing to address them. Because what that says is you care more about keeping the protocols than protecting those being harmed and abused, but Christians, by Christians, which is the opposite of, your, of what your own book tells you. Okay, so, you know, I, I had time. You know, I had time, right? I had time today. This is my response. Two things can be true at the same time. Christians should protect the vulnerable against being harmed. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'd argue, based on history and data, we have and continue to do so from building hospitals, universities to the abolitionist movement uh, and those on the front lines of ending human trafficking today. You can also look into who does the overwhelming giving towards charity and philanthropy. It's not leftists. Did you know that? Did you know that? You, you ever look at what and they pulled Bernie Sanders' taxes and AOC's taxes and look at the actual percentages they gave to any type of charities? how much they gave to charities, how much they gave back. You ever looked at those numbers? It's not much. It's not much. What is also true is Christianity is not inherently harmful, especially compared to the damage other systems and institutions have done and continue to do so. Specifically communism, Marxism, leftism. Issue is the goalpost has been moved. Our definitions of harmful, quote unquote, have changed. What used to be unacceptable because it was, and still is, a net negative to society is now celebrated with pride, quote unquote. And if when someone points out the obvious with facts, logic, and data, they're dismissed as having a phobia, quote-unquote, or being a bigot, quote-unquote, instead of engaging in the substance of the conversation. This is lazy, dismissive, and an easy out. Yet the values of you are not your feelings, these, these are the values of Christianity. We can talk about Jesus and salvation and all that, and that's obviously the gospel, the most important message in the world, all of that, right? All of that. But the values of Christianity, the overflow of, of, of the, 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 the scriptures is this. You are not your feelings. Choose purpose over pleasure. Learn to delay gratification. You are not the center of the universe. And go out and serve people. Is what Western society has been built on. All of these are Christian values. Okay? All of these are Christian values. And the ones when Christians fall short, I would say, is because humanity is broken. Humanity is broken and humanity will continue to fall short. That's the truth. That's the nature of people. Every system will have issues. Every worldview will have issues. The question is, which worldview is true and which worldview 
is falling short, not because of its precepts, but because of the damaged people that are functioning in it. Because Christians are still people, we will still mess things up, unfortunately. However, overall, Christianity is a massive net positive on society, on education, on literacy rates, on pulling people out of poverty, all of those different things. And anyone telling you the otherwise and, and sliding in a gajillion isms in the name of, and prayer can't fix it. Listen, prayer can supernaturally fix a lot and has fixed a lot. And there are people, perhaps from my parents' generation, maybe my grandparents' generation, that grew up to have amazing, functioning, flourishing lives that didn't even have language about what their trauma was and how broken they were. And yet they persevered despite that. Yet they lived and wanted to see a better life for their kids despite way harsher things than we go through today. A lot of what we deal with are first world problems. A lot of what you call trauma is you had your feelings hurt. And the times you have had real trauma, the times you have had real trauma, the times people have really hurt you, those are times that you should seek help and treatment, not be a victim. Seek help and treatment. But if you are going to continue blaming everyone else for all your issues, except dealing with them, instead of dealing with them, excuse me, if you're going to blame everyone else and the system and the people who abused you and not deal with them, well, then at some point you have to take responsibility and inventory. If you know that you're in a dark room and perhaps you were put in there the way the way Joseph was sold into slavery in the, in the Genesis, you were abused, you were misused, but there's a ladder that can pull you out of that pit and the ladder's there. It's just dark. You're going to have to fumble through and you refuse to go and look for that ladder and you refuse to deal with these issues, which right now with the internet and with YouTube and all the access we have to good Bible study and good me Christian mental health resource and all these things, and you refuse to do the work, you refuse to cooperate. I'm not sure why we would blame God in prayer on that. I'm not sure why we would, well, we would blame God in prayer on that. And again, therapy with a solid Christian therapist, I think is a huge W. I would recommend it. We put together a whole whole course called mastermyhabits.com. You can get to know my, me uh, and my Christian therapist. We go into all the issues on how to develop freedom-forming habits. We put that together to help people. But do not get it twisted. You could also, man, God could also do something supernaturally. God could also do something supernaturally through prayer and, and has and does and continues to do so. I think that's a false binary. I think we should do both. I think we should pray and I think we should we should um, walk in the power of the Spirit. And we should get treatment for our mental health issues. We see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think would be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. And here's the thing, with the hope to create a prayer movement, we've made the PDF version of this prayer journal completely free. So to get the PDF of our prayer journal completely for free, go to blessgodpdf.shop now.